Frankie Perez with Rich Girl Network TV here at the Saman Theater for the 35th edition of the Israel Film Festival that is taking place this year, the same date as Israel's Independence Day. A piece of movies, a piece of art from Israel is shining in Hollywood. This is the red carpet. Stay with us, Rich Girl Network TV. Today is Yom Hatzmaut in Israel, and it's the Israel Film Festival. The, the date is amazing, right? Amazing. It's one of the most exciting things that ever done. Uh, I was in Israel on Yom Hatzmaut, okay. yeah, on the stage, and then I took a flight and came here. And you just arrived? And I just arrived. So I know you're from Ashdod. You didn't yeah. miss the barbecue in Ashdod? No, no. I, I never miss the barbecue. <laughs> so you don't seem jet-lagged at all? No, I, I never had jet lag. Never. Good for you. So yeah. Tell me about this movie. First, uh, the excitement of being in Hollywood. Yeah. This is something, right? This is very some. It's something big for me. Like when I was a kid, it was my my biggest dream is to be here on Hollywood, and to be here with my movie. It's one of the most exciting thing. I read uh, in that in a podcast recently, you said that you wanted to show the part of you that is not shining. Yeah. But, but what did you mean by that? I think that in my movie, uh, it's like the opposite for me, from my character, Omer. And, uh, you know, I bring there something very uh, dark and very uh, violent. And it's very different for me. And it's, and it's, you know, for an actor, it's a blessing to do something like that. Tell me about the movie. What's your part or what, what's the story without revealing too much? Yeah. So the movie is about Matan. Matan came f from a really rich family and uh, they get broke and they move to a very very hard neighborhood and in the beginning all the neighbors just abused him and you know like more violent to him and uh, he fell in love in Eden that is her is he she his neighbor so I'm exciting <laughs> and he fell in love with her and he understand that if you want to save her and himself you need to be one of them one of the the violent neighborhood and to be a gangsters and to save them um, I don't have a lot. Have Instagram, just to, j give us the, where we can find you on Instagram. Uh, I have an Instagram, you can find me Omer Hazan. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <People is> best. <laughs> Toda raba. Toda raba. <laughs> How do you feel being in Hollywood? I don't know, I don't get it yet. It's, it's huge, it's awesome, it's amazing. I'm so thrilled, really. You're here for a, a movie called Two, and it's uh, the story is amazing. Uh, I read that it's... Uh, a woman with a mental disease who wants to have kids and uh, it's like a struggle it's a long way yeah it's it's just a bit of the story because the struggle it's not only this it's about a gay couple that want to have babies and while having uh, you know um, pills of your depression of so or something like this you cannot be pregnant so my partner needs to get pregnant and trying and trying and trying and this very loving couple uh, having lots of uh, difficulties and they need to manage and inside this love nest something started to happen and slowly slowly sometimes you understand that love is not enough I have a personal question for you 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 grew up you were born and you grew up in Jerusalem right Correct, yeah. Did you grow up in a religious environment? <laughs> this is a very personal and touchy question. Uh, I grew up in a, a mixed uh, environment. My father, he became religious very much. He's a, very, he's a big orthodox right now. Uh, so I grew up in a, a mixed uh, school. We, half was uh, uh, not religious and the other half was religious and I learned both sides. Um, and How do you feel? Because it's, it's a problem in the Israeli society today. You have on one, on one side the Chilonim and on the other side the Datim, the religious and the non-religious. You grew up in Jerusalem. You're in the movie industry. How do you position yourself? Wow, this is a great question and I'm also gay. I'm lesbian, I have a wife and I have a kid, my amazing son, that I didn't have birth. My, my partner did, Rafael. So you relate to the whole thing in the movie? It's like cosmic because while doing this movie was just uh, two or three months before me doing it myself. So it was like um, a preparation to the real thing. And when I got it to the real thing, I had my experience as an actress. So it was really nice. And 
uh, uh, regarding to your first question about Jerusalem and Chilonim uh, and Datiim, I think that as long as you are not in the edges, you can get along really good together. You can you can be the best friends and to understand and to live together even though you are different. So this is my uh, prayer to the world, to live together, even with the differences. And I'm with Asian. How are you? Hi, I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. So are you from Los Angeles? Are you from Israel? Where are you from? I'm from Kazakhstan originally, actually, born and raised, but I've been living in beautiful California for almost a decade now, so I'm very excited. And you were part of that movie. Uh, is, the, uh, is it an Israeli movie? It's called Legend of Tamaris. Um, no, it's actually an international movie. It's on Amazon right now, it recently came out. It's a historical epic drama where I got to portray my ancestor, a princess warrior from 2,500 years ago. Have you been to Israel? Not yet. I would love to go one day. So you're getting the flavor of Israel tonight. I am. This is my first time at the Israeli Film Festival and I'm very excited. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Mia, choosing the date of the Israeli Film Festival, the day of Israel's independence. I mean, it's very powerful. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, I feel the power really to do the festival in the same day. It's just by coincidence, you know, we postponed the festival twice this year. From November to March, I got to February, I said, no, 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 the corona is here, we cannot do nothing. And I moved it to uh, May, and I tried to find the right day, boom. <laughs> it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about this edition, the 35th, what is special this year? Every year you tell us the specificity that... The specialness. Uh, it's a little bit what's special this year is, first of all, we're doing the festival. Yeah. That is very special. <laughs> Second, uh, we have TV series that we're showing this year, you know, Israeli TV. Right. Very yeah. powerful. Uh, yeah. So we, we uh, by the way, tomorrow is the premiere of Tehran, second season, and it's amazing, and we are very excited. We have tomorrow a special dinner for some of our sponsors. And we're all going to see Tehran premiering in uh, America and in Israel at the same time. One of the most awaited series, the season two, everyone is waiting for that season. That's right, that's right. And, and we're also going to show Beauty, the Beauty Queen of Jerusalem on the 19th in our closing night, when the next day Netflix is opening worldwide. So we're doing a premiere for TV, we never did that before. So that's very exciting. I was a student in Berkeley College of Music in Boston, trying to make it in the music after I already did it. I used to be in a rock band, I know, you know that? Yes. In Poogie and Caveret. And I tried to study music when I was 30 years old. But uh, I find suddenly somebody gave me as an idea, I wanted to bring two movies to BU, Boston University. And I went to Israel, and somebody asked me, you're putting together a festival? And I said, hmm. Interesting idea, and that's what I did. The first one was in Boston, six films, one theater. But what was interesting that after the first screening of the troupe, a film that I'm acting to, a doctor came to me and said, "Listen, everybody here in Boston should come to this festival. Are you going to advertise in Boston Globe?" I said, "No." I said, "Why not?" I said, "I'm a student in Berkeley. I don't have money to advertise in the Boston Globe." I will pay for it. Where's the ad? He put an ad, and Sunday, my last day, five screenings, sold out all the screenings. 600 people, almost 3,000 people. I came out suddenly financially successful. Three weeks later, I was on the way to New York to do my first festival in New York. Wow, amazing. And, and today, many, many years after, it's amazing when you look at it, at the time, at the beginning, Israel, like the rest of the world, was watching what was happening in America, right? right. Today, in, e in, in the television industry, the whole world is watching what Israel is doing. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm, I'm very proud. And, and you uh, played a part in that. Uh, I, yeah, in, in promoting it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. My Always a pleasure. I hope everybody will come to the festival. We need all of you to come to the festival. Thank you. And I'm with Ehud Bleiberg. Good evening. Good evening. And congratulations for uh, receiving the Cinematic Achievement Award as the producer of Image of Victory and Writing with a Spy. You received the award for 
your career, not only for those two movies. I produced 54 films in my life for the last 37 years. Of them, about uh, 40 films from uh, here in Hollywood and like 12 films, 40 films from Israel. Every, every honoree that you get, it's exciting you. And especially on a film that I've done in the memory of my dad. He's playing in, the, there is a character that play my dad, you know, with the cow, you will see there. So th this is a very special movie for you. Today is also very special because it's uh, Yom Atzmaut in Israel. Yeah. Yom Atzmaut, Techi Medinat Israel. Image of Victor is a film about a young group in a kibbutz that 22, 25, 18, 19, that one day the, the cloud come upon them become gray and the Egyptian came to uh, invade Israel and to try to take the place. And it's tell the story of uh, these uh, naive people and what happened to them. And you will see it in the film. Right. It's based on, it's an original screenplay that uh, based on, uh, uh, it's inspired by a uh, historical faction. And tell me about the second movie, Riding with a Spy. It's a film about Anat Kam. She was a soldier, young soldier in the army, and she took some documents and leaked them out to a journalist. And they accused her in treason, and she was sitting in a jail, and tell the story of what happened after that to her life. Congratulations. Chazaku Baruch. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm here with my brother, my dear friend, the president of the Jewish Journal, David Suissa. David, bonjour. It's great to be here, Frank. Uh, should I speak in Francais, en Anglais? It doesn't matter. We can speak in Japanese, uh, you and me. You know, everything is possible. So today is Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel Film Festival at the same time as the Yom Ha'atzma'ut. It's a great symbol. No, it is. And I think the, the whole idea of Israel as a happy, vibrant, creative society comes out the most on nights like this because we're so immersed in politics, we're so immersed in dark news, we're so immersed in ide ideological differences that when you have movies, filmmaking, art, this is what Israel is really about. They don't live to fight, they don't live to defend themselves, they live to create and movies is the ultimate epitome of creation. You know, I'm going to ask you a question that I will not be able to ask to anyone else tonight, okay? Wow. Do you feel, David, no, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like the Israel movie industry is conveying the Jewish values today? You know, I think the great thing about artists, they don't really care about conveying values. What they care about is entertainment above everything. They realize that you know, the people who convey values maybe are journalists like me, or rabbis, they convey values. I think when an artist does his thing, he conveys a certain value. And whatever value he may have, if you see the show Fauda, it's unbelievable. The value that I see there is the value of capturing reality in as authentic a way as possible, rather than the value of having a political agenda. I didn't feel any agenda in that show. So if you ask me what values did the creator of Fada convey, it was the value of creating authentic storytelling. And then the people, the viewers, they make their own opinion. And then they make their own opinion. In fact, you know, if, if I want somebody to understand the complexity of the Arab-Israeli conflict, I'll send them to Fada. It does it as good as any book, because it does it indirectly. It does it through storytelling. Thank you so much, David, for being here. Always a pleasure. Good evening, Daphna. Good evening. It's so wonderful to be here. And it's so wonderful to see you. I heard the name and it sounds so French. Cinémoi. Cinémoi, yes. Tell me all about it. It means my film. What better network name could you have? So it's a network? Yes, it's a network, a television network. We are known to be the only high fashion network in the world. We show vintage to modern movies. We show lifestyle programming. And we're very conscientious. We believe in media that matters. And I just offered the movie Os Osley to be on our channel. Cinema is everywhere, and all you have to do to know is go on to cinema, C-I-N-E-M-O-I dot TV, and you'll find out everything. <laughs> <laughs>